go. Foot down, first gear. Ooh. Oh, that's a lot of RPM between those gears for a tiny little engine. Second gear, still second gear, 45 miles an hour. Third gear. Oh, that is... That's it. So you, I can't shift any more than third going that's up the hill. That's all she wrote. All right, man. Uh, give, her, give her everything she's got. We got to get up this hill. Really, that's all she can do. Man, look at that smoke. Look at that condensation billow. All right, get, get over the, the get over, get over, get over. It's 1996, and your veteran grandpa passed away from a chronic case of frowning and left you $7,000. Well, you're not exactly well off, but you want a new car. And that $7,000 will buy you a base model Geo Metro. And you'll still have $1 left over to rent Skate or Die 2, The Search for Double Trouble. For your seven large, you get windy windows, five forward gears, a tachometer, an 11 gallon fuel capacity, an entire liter of fuel displacement. You get 55 horsepower at 5,700 RPM and 58 pound feet of torque at 3,300 RPM. But now it's 2023, and I need to set the scene. Interior. An attractive, thin, 25-year-old with a non-binary body held a red solo cup. The blue contents rippled from bass beats forced out from portable PA speakers. The speakers were on tripod stands. We were standing together in a yellow-colored hotel room in a lesser American city. The type of city whose airport offers no direct flights unless they're going to Chicago, Charlotte, Dallas-Fort Worth, or Phoenix. This hotel room was crowded and loud. I kept staring at their body. They wore a collar, no shirt, purple underwear, thigh-high teal socks, and Converse All-Stars. I don't remember their hair or their face because their bulge was unnaturally large. I was horny. They started talking to me. My generation is doomed. I'll never have a job. I'll never have a house. Everything's taken. There's nothing to get but food service. I was horny. So I answered. You're not wrong. There's nothing much in this town except for chain restaurants, prisons, one Amazon fulfillment center, and a textile factory. It's so unfair. You can leave. I don't have any money. Do you have a job now? No one wants to pay a living wage. Not around here. I should just give up. It's hopeless. How many game consoles do you have? Why? I have two. Does that include a Nintendo Switch? I have three. Do you have a car? No. At this point, my erection had gone down. Sell your consoles. All your games. You'll have enough for a Geo Metro, plus one year of insurance. Its tank costs $40 to fill, and it'll take you 440 miles. It's about nine cents a mile. You can do it. You can find a better life than here. Am I a straw man to you? If you were, I'd be picking you up and taking you with me. You're a human with potential. And a Geo Metro is still a car you can buy for under $1,000. Look around. They're out there. They're normally driven by men who bring their own Mega Touch XLs to the bar. I just need to get to work so I can fund my whippet addiction. My sleeping pill addiction. I pay off my Visa card with my MasterCard. I bring an iPad to the bar so I can laugh really loud at Facebook memes. Now I look around to see if anybody knows why anybody wants to see what's so funny. A 24-year-old waitress really likes me. I know, I know, I, I know it's true because sometimes she don't charge me for a side of ham cubes. I don't have to cut my hair no more now that my wife died. Sometimes I go to the Exeter Diner. <sighs> All right, class, today we'll be talking about post-structuralism. Yep, 
I know. When are we ever going to use this in real life? Well, guess what? This class this is a college class. It costs real money, so that means this is real life. Get used to it. So the Geo Metro. It's a poverty spec kind of car, right? Displaces a single liter. Transmission is as big as the engine. Look, looks like someone put wheels on a popcorn turd from a backed up middle-aged insurance salesman. Is about, that about right? Well, no. No, it isn't. Or rather, that's not the only approach we can take. I'm going to need you to abandon all your ideas about the Geo Metro being the disposable camera of 90s cars, because what we think about when we think about the Geo Metro is typically so far removed from the car itself, it isn't useful to us when we're trying to figure out if this car is worth the mental bandwidth it takes to examine it in the first place. This is how you're going to understand post-structuralist theory. You can use this in high school. You can use this in college. Pay attention. This is what post-structuralist theory is. Our beliefs about a work, and a work can be anything. It can be this YouTube video. It could be a, a painting. It could be a comic book. It could be graffiti. It could be an ad in a magazine. It can be a billboard. Our beliefs about a piece of work are socially encoded. And only by eliminating those structures can we take a more objective view. To put it another way, you already know what you think about a Geo Metro already. We need to eliminate those structures. And by structures, I mean the way society or the collective consciousness pre-programs you to think about something. Only by eliminating those structures can we take a more objective view. We need to push beyond what we already think we know. Because really, a text doesn't have a singular meaning or purpose. So what do we know about the Geo? Well, this is the second generation Geo Metro. It is also a Suzuki Swift. This is a captured import. This is not really a General Motors product. This is a Suzuki. Geo was created uh, so that consumers wouldn't immediately write off the obviously foreign parts of the General Motors fleet. You saw them turn a Toyota into a Geo, as well as Suzuki and a Suzu. The Suzuki Sidekick became the Geo Tracker, the Isuzu Impulse became the Geo Storm, and the Suzuki Swift, or Suzuki Cultus, became the Geo Metro. And when it first debuted, it was that one liter three cylinder. It went slow enough to get your ticket punched if you had to merge in high speed situations. This car is so light and so fuel efficient. Modern automakers have never been able to replicate this type of fuel economy without going electric. We were ragging on this car all day long, revving it, revving it, revving it. And when Jim, the owner, got home, he did the calculations and he still managed 41 miles a gallon. Driven normally, this gets you above 50 miles a gallon. Well, how does it do that? It sacrifices everything for fuel economy. It does it even more than the Honda Civic EH2. It even sacrifices safety. These wheels are little pizza cutters. The brakes are the size of motorcycle brakes. I'm talking 90s motorcycle brakes. The gearing between each gear is larger than most cars. Fourth gear and fifth gear are useless for acceleration. Nothing is made to stand in the way of fuel economy. In 1995, this became the first American car to offer daytime running lights. It was the last engine available in America with throttle body injection. Jim was only able to get this car to 70 miles an hour. And while OBD2 was added for 1996, it came at the cost of some fuel efficiency. By the end of the day, people with the updated cars were still getting 44 city, 49 highway, but it was more difficult for them to get 50 miles a gallon. We're not sure why. The, the fuel mapping had been different. It could have been an ECU for another car, but something happened with the Geo Metro when it went from OBD1 to OBD2. The fuel economy went down. I love this little engine. Nick took off his shoe and put it on top of the, uh, the valve cover for scale. And the valve cover has these like fake cooling fins on top for some reason. There's only one airbag. It's for the driver. There's no air conditioning. Notice in the front, it has a little outlet here and some tow bars. Yeah, Jim's family towed this car behind an RV. So the 144,000 miles uh, isn't really accurate. A third of that number was from being flat towed. One of the things that makes this so budget friendly is how small every single part is. They're so small 
that getting new parts is astonishingly cheap. Jim told us the cost of a tire 10 years ago for this was, I'm not joking, 20 bucks. A radiator, $25. New rotors, $25. New rear brake drums, $20. In some ways, it's kind of like my Nissan Pal, a car I will miss forever and regret selling. No, my Pal wasn't powerful, but it was fun. And fun beats power 90% of the time. And the other 10% is when you need to impress somebody you want to grind against. The Metro is fun in a way more pretentious cars cannot be. It's like a first-gen Game Boy. You can beat on it like you think you want its milk money. And it's still going to run. Because the build quality is better than anything GM was doing in the 90s, including the Corvette. Your thrills will be modest, but they'll be deserved. You need to fight for every ounce of power this engine can put out. It's not going to win any awards for appearance, though. And throughout the early 2000s, these things were abused. They rode around on tires as bald as Vin Diesel. The best you can hope for is that they were owned by fuel-conscious dads who bought the car to pass it down. The permanent matzo ball soup streaks blending into a pattern on his plaid shirt. The Geo Metro has the appearance of struggle. It embodies the substance of effort, which is odd because rebadging smacks of laziness. But GM wanted people to buy their captive imports. Look, we're GM. Come buy our domestic foreign cars assembled in Canada. You won't spend your entire Monday wondering how you're already down to a quarter tank before the week's ended. But the Geo Metro was ahead of its time. The Geo Metro has always been grasping for a concrete sense of place within a chronological moment. Aesthetically, it belongs to the 90s. But mechanically, it belongs to the hybrid and EV era. You have manufacturers trying to solve the fuel economy problem without resorting to electric, not realizing we solved it 30 years ago. The catch, of course, is that you could never get away with designing a car like this today because it's so unsafe. It's so light. It's so flimsy. It's safe as long as you don't hit anything and no one hits you. Will this car continue to exist as a piece of reliable transportation? I don't think so. I think the world in 2023 has gotten too fast. We expect our cars to get 0 to 60 in no less than 8 seconds. There are conditions where this car will not be able to reach 60 miles an hour if the incline is steep enough. We expect our cars to come to a stop even faster than they accelerate. A Geo Metro will not do that. While there is seating for five, this car becomes like an overladen grocery cart with five people in it. If you're driving over the Appalachian Mountains, you may have to put your hazard lights on. The heater blows hot, and it doesn't even need power steering. It's so light you wouldn't even notice that there's no power steering pump. This car is transportation in the way that so many startups have been trying to make. It runs on the dirtiest 87 octane you could find. It'll probably run on 85 or 84 if you can honestly find that stuff. If you get the chance to get behind the wheel of a Geo Metro, please drive it a little bit. You'd be surprised what people in the 90s were willing to sacrifice to save money. But the parts for this car still exist today. They're still in computers, in part shops everywhere. You can still find parts for a Geo Metro. There are forums for this car. You can have this car as a daily driver. You can survive with a Geo Metro. You can better yourself with a Geo Metro. You can get out of this dirty town you're decrying in a Geo Metro. This car can save you. This car can make you rich. The Geo Metro represents the gulf between expectations and reality. It will exceed expectations while meeting the reality of its limitations. It doesn't do much more than that. But in a very post-structuralist way, whatever this car was intended to do, or whatever it was intended to be, it's secondary to what you get out of it. Meaning isn't fixed. The meaning of your little town isn't fixed. The meaning of this room party we're in with this thumping bass and, and your purple underwear. My God, you're well endowed. This meaning that you have constructed for yourself has already been constructed for you. 
Your little tweets that you make have already been selected by people like me who are paid quite well to form your opinions. Don't listen to it. Listen to your own capabilities. Listen to the observable world. Free from structure. Meaning isn't fixed. A bad car is a bad car, but is it really? A good car is a great car, but what if it's not? The Geo Metro contains the multitudes of the automotive experience. The lows are low, but the highs are high enough to make you forget its reputation. Because in driving it, the car has developed a new one, an identity linked to your interpretation and bonded to your experience. Get out there. Save money. Earn money. You want to get out of the rut? Get down to the most basic needs. You'll be surprised how little you can live on. Your future self will think you're a genius. Till now, I always thought geos were bad. I see no reason now for thinking different. She's good though, but why would you drive a Geo? Tell me why would you drive a Geo? This is this is something I miss about the 90s is this piece of plastic right here. <laughs> because they're having to hide that it has legacy sealed beam headlights. Yeah. It's, like it's, it's contoured with the body. It's yeah, beautiful. yeah. It, these, are, these are aerodynamic. This is just a thing that's... It's how many, like, point, point three more of a miles per gallon would you have if this was filled in? <laughs> Wait, people do replace these, right? Well, no, that's the thing. This was the base model, and a lot of them came with the upgraded, uh, with the contoured regular plastic lights with the screw-in halogen bulb in the back. You didn't see many with the sealed beams because that was, like, the super, super base model that, like, hardly anybody got those because like even when you went to the dealer most of them had the the regular plastic lights on them so like was there an option for a four cylinder in these yes all, yeah that was, was the top tier that was the top tier one probably with the better lights <laughs> you know but what also is crazy is you could get the three cylinder with air conditioning and i can't even imagine how shitty this thing is with air conditioning because like it can barely move by itself so like to have the three cylinder with AC because I was like because it didn't have AC when I, I originally thought well because it's a three cylinder you can't have the AC because the engine can't handle it then I heard people like oh I have a three cylinder with AC and I'm like you're out of your mind like the car cannot move how mm -hmm. how how is that even possible like yeah so you got you got one tensioner pulley you got your alternator oh there's two oh wait that's where it would go there's an I extra there's down there right? no there's an extra uh uh level oh yeah yeah, that, yeah, this is for the, yeah for the ac right there yeah oh wait there's no power steering no there's no power steering where did anybody any of them have power steering? no because the car was so light that you didn't need it the tire the tires are little pizza cutters so like <laughs> when and when you get in the car it, you, it doesn't you feel it it's weird you like it's like it doesn't need power steering it's completely easy to turn okay like <laughs> it was like the old aw11 i had none of them had power steering because right? they had it right the engine was in the middle yeah. mm. 